Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished... Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Weeknights at 8 on Talk TV. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Hello. For the first few days of this week, we are going to continue with the unsettled, blustery theme of showers and longer spells of rain. The rain not too heavy, but still not great news. More wet weather uh, across many parts of the UK. But as we head into the weekend, we see high pressure starting to move in from the west and dominate the scene for Saturday and Sunday. So for most of the UK, it's looking largely fine and settled, much calmer uh, days to come. And there will be some bright or sunny spells. And actually, it will be a sunny start to the day across much of the UK on Wednesday, but there will be some showers around it will be fairly blustery particularly around the northeast of scotland and eastern areas of england where showers are likely throughout the day and at the same time it comes cloudy with some showery rain moving eastwards across ireland and northern ireland later to some western parts of britain as well temperatures will be around average for the time of year up to around 12 or 13 degrees celsius not feeling that mild in the sunshine though with those brisk northerly winds but the winds will ease as we head into thursday however there will be some showery rain spreading into northern areas of the uk further south should be mostly fine and bright then, as I mentioned, as we head into the weekend, high pressure will take over and dominate the scene. So winds will be light, there'll be more in the way of sunshine, and there will be milder conditions too. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Cross Talk. One o'clock every weekday. Very good morning to you. It's coming up to two minutes past five o'clock. It's Wednesday, the 17th of April, and this is your early breakfast show on Talk, where we're on TV, on DAB, and on your smart speaker. We're live from the news building here in London with me, James Max. I'm with you till six this morning. So later, we speak to Becky O'Connor from Pension B, and we talk about whether bras should attract VAT, whether lower inflation will return, and what it means for your money, plus Scottish power. Did they overcharge? And is a refund on the way? So we'll talk to her about those stories. Also, we'll be taking your calls and reviewing the papers as well. But this morning, despite opposition from many of his own MPs, the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has successfully navigated his anti-smoking bill through Parliament. He wants it to be one of the ways we remember his premiership. But what will Rishi Sunak's legacy be? So, a very good morning to you. I hope you're well. And uh, the phone lines are now open, by the way, because I want to talk to you about Rishi Sunak's legacy. I want to know what you think it will be. Leadership hopefuls defy Sunak over smoking ban, says The Telegraph this morning. Nearly half of Tory MPs, including Penny Mordaunt and uh, Kemi Badenoch, refused to back the Prime Minister's legislation. And I've said what I think about this legislation, that whilst uh, I think we can all agree that smoking is a bad thing and we certainly wouldn't wish to encourage children in any shape or form to take it up, I would also say that um, personal choice is important and the ability to be able to make choices in your life are important. There are lots of things that we could ban if we uh, suddenly decided that nanny in a state wishes to have a view on every aspect of your life. If you drink too much alcohol, if you eat too much food, the whole of the sugary tax thing, um, I, I just think is just an abomination on the basis that I'm not sure it makes that much difference. And also, I don't think it should be government's place to stick their nose into every single aspect of your life. And when people start saying, oh, but it costs the NHS £16 billion to deal with smoking-related diseases, yes, it does. 
But then you have to look at the £10 billion that's raised directly from tax and then also the indirect amount of money that the government raises. And by the way, a bit morbid, but if you're smoking and if you die early, then, um, well, you're going to cost the NHS less, aren't you? The longer you live, the more you cost because of the care that's required and the various other procedures that will probably take place in the 10, 15 years extra that you have in your life. Do I support trying to help people to stop smoking? Yes. Should smoking be banned in public places? Although I didn't understand it necessarily at the time, I think the answer to that is yes. As somebody who has smoked but certainly don't anymore, I find the smell, if I get in a car that people have been smoking in, it's disgusting. I don't really like the smell of uh, smoking very much at, at all. But should people have the choice to, you know, pick up a burner, cigar, and smoke it if they want to, or to uh, smoke various things? Well, it's your choice. And it should be your choice. But anyway, it went through with quite a significant majority. Why? Because Nanny and her state is back. And in particular, when it comes to Labour, they all voted with it. They love it. They love a ban. Oh, we live in awful times. Anyway, uh, so this is kind of one of the things that Rishi Sunak wants his legacy to be, and I suppose unconnected. Um, uh, weirdly, I go to the star. Lettuce Liz. Plucky Lettuce is part of evil London elite. Uh, Liz Truss has been out and about on the uh, various uh, talk shows hauling her carcass to whoever will bother listening to her as she talks about her legacy of the 49 days in power that she had. Absolutely extraordinary. I mean, I don't think her legacy is good and, and Rishi Sunak's perhaps better, but, you know, Rishi Sunak wanted the Rwanda bill to be his legacy. What a complete waste and utter time, effort, money that is and was. Dear, oh dear. And the smoking ban? I mean, it just creates... It's... It's... It's the classic example, in my view, of the unintended consequence legislation. That the unintended consequence will be that you'll have somebody of one age who can go and buy tobacco products and somebody who was born a few days later who can't and probably an illegal trade for many years to come of uh, tobacco-based products to those who are not legally allowed to buy them. I just think it's a nonsense policy that is not going to make sense. And imagine in 30 years' time that you have however many years old and you're having to produce ID if you want to go and buy some uh, tobacco-based products. I mean, really? Anyway, let's talk about this. Uh, we, <laughs> we look at Rishi Sunak. He has successfully navigated this anti-smoking bill through Parliament. He wants it to be one of the ways that we remember his premiership. But I want to know what you think Rishi Sunak's legacy will be. Uh, Ian's in London. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, James. How are you this morning? Yeah, very well, thank you, which is remarkable, given how much I've had to be on air recently. Yeah, you're putting the hours in per plate, yeah? Well, uh, you know, when called upon, that's what one does, Ian. Absolutely. Well, Sunak is the weakest, weakest Prime Minister this country has ever had. He should have sacked Braverman by now. He still hasn't, especially her going to Brussels yesterday. He should be sacking Truss but gallivanted around the world. He should have sacked Johnson when he had the chance, and he didn't. He should have sacked Willy Wagger. He didn't. He should be sacking Fletcher for saying that he was going to uh, form a pact or whatever he said about, about Anderson. All of this shows that he is the weakest man in this country at the moment. Before him, you had Truss, who was mad. Before her, you had Johnson, who was corrupt and deceitful. Before him, you had um, Theresa May, who I don't think is um, was decent, decent prime uh, minister. Ian. Before. She dilly dallied too much. Ian. And finally, you had Cameron, who sold us down the river because he was scared of you. Ian. Yes, James. Um, yes. I'm, I'm glad you got all that stuff off your chest. Um, and right. some of the things that you say about the various prime ministers we've had will probably resonate. I, I'm not sure necessarily that Rishi Sunak is the weakest prime minister that we've ever had, because I think that there are uh, plenty of contenders for that, uh, whether it's Liz Truss or indeed uh, going back in time to Jim Callaghan. Uh, there, there are plenty of examples of weak prime ministers or prime ministers who are wounded. However, uh, Rishi Sunak wants his legacy to be this smoking bill. Do you, do you, I mean, do you support that bill? No, I don't support it. Seems unworkable to me. Seems so. Seems, Labour seems supported it. I know Labour supported it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did they support it because politically it looks good, or did they support I, it because um, we're going to have to deal with the fact that when and if and when they come into power, it's going to be a nanny and a state? No, 
No, it's not going to be like that. I was listening to the, uh, the Labour MP for, um, I think it was Ealing and Southall yesterday, and basically he put it in a nutshell. It is, it is a good idea. We've got to get people to stop smoking because it's bad for you, but it's the same with alcohol in moderation. It's the same with, with bad foods, making the choices, having them in moderation. But this is just unworkable, and as you said earlier on, you know, somebody could be born a few days apart from another person and they're not allowed to buy it, and the other person is. It's just, it, it's, it's rushed through. It's bad law. Um, I mean, I think there's a reason why yeah. New Zealand have decided to ditch this idea. But setting that aside, so um, I'm, I'm assuming that you think Richie Sunak's legacy will be one of uh, weakness and uh, disappointment. Weakness and disappointment, and I think that we all know that he's feathering his and his family's mess. Uh, with these big contracts with EP and emphasis and what have you. And we know that as soon as he gets booted out, he'll be on the plane to California. And I tell you, I'll be waving goodbye and good riddance to him. OK. Um, I, I couldn't be bothered to challenge you in a whole load of things that you said there because it just seems a bit pointless. Uh, meanwhile, let's, let's, go to, <laughs> let's, go to, uh, let's go to a newspaper. Which one do you want? Uh, could I have the Daily um, Mirror, please? OK, well, luckily I've got the uh, the lovely gloves that were sent to me. So, to make sure, because, you know, one has to deal with a toxic rag. Right, the yep. gloves are on, Ian, so it means that I can, okay. I can handle that thing. Uh, let's have a number between 1 and 60, please. Uh, number 5, please, James. Number 5. Here it is. Oh. Historic vote that could save countless lives. Britain's giving up slowly smoking ban um, means that if you're born from uh, 09, uh, that means that you'll never be able to buy a tobacco-based product. Um, this will make Britain the first country to outlaw smoking for future generations. The bill will make it illegal to sell tobacco to products any born after the 1st of January 2009, which will cover children who are currently 15 or younger. Uh, the government has been trying to price people out of smoking for decades. In 1995, yeah. you could buy 20 king-size cigarettes for just £2.59. Increases in tobacco duty mean that uh, it now costs £16 for a pack of fags. Yeah, yeah, £16. And then all, all we've done is we've sent a whole junior generation away from cigarettes and into vaping. And into vaping, which oh. we don't know the don't know the full ins and outs of yet. No, it's we just, don't. It, it's just un unworkable where you've got two friends, and you know the one who's a few days older that's the, the, the can buy the ciggies will buy them. That's all that happens. And then of course you've got the further down the line when they're both forty years old. Exactly. Um, it's going to be a bit of a mare, but there we go. Ian, thank you for uh, your list of things that you're just angry about, and I'm glad that we got that off your chest. And uh, for those of you listening, uh, I've got plenty of things to say about what Ian had to say, and it's a lot of nonsense, but there we go. Sometimes just got to allow you to have your say. And that's what this programme's all about, having your say. So, uh, what do you think Richard Sunak's legacy will be? Give me a call. It's 0344 499 1000. Eric is in Norwich. Hello, Eric. Uh, good morning, young man. You're, you're a busy bee this week. I know. So uh, today it, it's just this show um, because the sun's uh, never mind the ballots is on later. However, tomorrow uh, I will be back on the talk and then subsequently on prime time after this show. Oh, goodness me. Maybe you can get your head down nice and early in the night time. Well, you might say that, but uh, I've got to go to a do later. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. It's There's just no non-stop, Eric. There's no rest for the wicked. Cheers. Uh, anyway, let's talk about this. What's uh, Rishi Sunak's <laughs> legacy? Um, his legacy for me will be uh, the, um, the the boots. To be honest, he's he's failed him every every which way he goes. He's failed. I mean. <laughs> I suppose the thing about the boats is that it's going to be interesting if and when we get a new um, a, a new government, they're going to have an awful lot on their plate in a very different way to when Tony Blair took over. Because when Tony Blair took over, although um, the Conservative Party then was mired in a whole range of uh, sc uh, scandal and sleaze and all this sort of business, they had fixed the economy and the economy was doing pretty well and the world was a benign place, uh, relatively speaking. Um, and then, of course, what we now see is uh, a situation in which the world is a very dangerous place, uh, a much more difficult place to do international trade and perhaps more insular in what it's thinking and doing. 
we've got a situation in which oil prices are very uncertain. We've got uh, a, pol a policy or set of policies that um, the government want to pursue for net zero and all that sort of business, and Labour seem to be far keener on that stuff than perhaps the Tories are. Uh, and then we've got an economy which is okay; it's dragging its, you know, heels along and and kind of bumbling around, you know, at the bottom. It's, it's it's not in recession, but it's not in positive growth particularly either. The threat of inflation. Um, and we've got an awful lot of problems. So we've got problems within the NHS and the Home Office. We've got still the issues of boats arriving and asylum seekers and people r arriving legally. We've got a lack of um, sorting out of uh, our educational system. We've got potholes in the road. Uh, we've got a national transport system that's not really fit for purpose. Uh, we've got a range of people who are not working for whatever reason. We've got a whole load of social issues to untangle. Um, so when it comes to looking at legacy, as you say, the boats and the numbers, not great. Uh, I mean, Rishi Sunak, I think he's going to sort of walk off into the sunset and in a few years and decades we'll probably forget who he was. Well, yes, uh, hopefully. Um, I don't know, that seems, I, I don't know where this has all gone wrong. I, I know we had COVID and we had um, the war in Ukraine and now in the Middle East, but you, uh, that's just gone down and down and down and down and down. That's well, I think there are a couple of reasons, Eric. I mean, the first thing is that I don't think that we as a nation have adapted to a changing world particularly well. So, for example, the um, where people are making money and where businesses are really succeeding. You know, we have some tech business here, of course, and compared to the rest of Europe, which is actually running on what I would describe as empty when it comes to economic growth, because they really haven't embraced technology as they could or should. We, we also haven't uh, addressed problems when they've been identified. We knew that there were problems within the health service and system, uh, and yet we haven't bothered to tackle them. We knew that our tax system needed reform and we haven't bothered to do so. We knew that companies were disrupting the way that trade was taking place and we didn't, again, adapt. We knew that we needed a whole load of new skills within particularly our uh, younger generation, we haven't done that. We knew that there was a housing crisis looming and we knew that um, huge numbers of people were moving around uh, the globe and, and we weren't preparing ourselves for the fact that uh, our population was changing. A whole range of things that we haven't bothered to address and we just left them there. Um, and, and, and that is all coming home to roost. That has, yes. And you, um, I'm, he's let the, um, the working class and the um, middle classes down really badly. The rich have got so much richer and the working class got so much poorer, and the middle class got so much poorer. The taxes are unbelievable, really. Well, they are. I, I don't think necessarily that the working class have got poorer. It's just that I don't think that they've been uh, enabled to share in the success of perhaps elsewhere. And when you talk about the rich getting richer, we're not talking... I mean, it depends how you define rich, because I think, uh, you know, one really does have to have a better understanding as to what some people are earning and, and money. Uh, to have a proper conversation about that. But then it also comes down to our tax system, which is not effective. No, that's... Uh, that's well, I, we, we must be the highest tax country in the world now, I would have thought. I know well, we're, always, we're, we're not, but um, I think we're certainly seeing the highest tax burden in our lifetimes. And what I'm really irritated about is that Gordon Brown... Uh, complicated our tax system to a very considerable extent. If you have a look at the tax guide, I think it was about two and a half thousand pages when he came to power, and I think by the time he'd finished it was 8,000. And the Conservatives have made it worse. They have applied a whole range of measures and changes on our tax system that have not assisted. And in fact, we should be simplifying it. We should be making it easier to collect tax, uh, to understand what your tax is, to reduce the number of loopholes, to, um, to make it easier and, and, and more... Uh, understandable and I also really dislike the use of fair when it comes to tax oh it's not fair that somebody's earning a lot of money well it's perfectly fair what we should be doing is making sure that people who should pay tax are paying tax and, and to make sure the rules are clear simple and easy to understand that's a very good point you know these offshore offshore um Offshore banks and what have you, they, that's, um, you know, we... If but they've been operating because... for, for, for forever and a day, Eric. And the thing is that we have to recognise that we're operating in a global environment. And, I, and I'm well aware that people seem to think that you, you can just tax people out of existence. But I've yet to understand the rationale that um, one of the reasons that we've had the non-DOM status is that there is a doctrine that says you shouldn't be taxed twice uh, for money that you earn elsewhere. 
So if you earn money overseas and then you're taxed in that local jurisdiction, you shouldn't necessarily be taxed over here as well because as soon as you do, people with means will move that money and move where, where they exist. And I'd much rather have some money coming into our economy and investing than no money because if you have a tax system where it just punishes people and people say, oh, people must pay a higher rate of tax, fine. But then you end up with... Um, less money coming into the coffers because people just move their money the more the wealthier you are the more ability you have to uh, move it to wherever you wish to in the world and for as long as uh, tax uh, havens exist that's always going to be the case so there is no global um, tax uh, initiative and it's never going to work so if it's never going to work you should work within the rules and try and do the best you can well, that's, yeah, that's uh, all far too complicated for me. I've never been rich enough and never will be to... Uh, to well, me, me neither, thing. Eric, but I, I've worked with a lot of people who uh, do have significant funds and they will happily tell you that uh, as soon as a tax regime becomes too, Im you know, with, uh, you know, invasive and uh, expensive, they will happily move their assets and their money elsewhere. And you can well, say, yeah, well, that's really terrible, so. that's unfair, you should pay your fair share. Well, good luck on that. Yeah, well, I suppose they, they will bring some tax into the country and they, they will spend their money here, which is probably a good thing, and you're right. Um, but, well, uh, you would have thought, but I, but I think that there are things we can or should be doing here. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't pay tax, and I'm not saying that the wealthy should get oh, scot-free and not have to pay um, their share either. I just think that there, there are better ways to do it. I mean, for example, for probably 15, 20 years now, we've ignored the fact that in an organisation like Amazon can operate and retail and sell things and, and to distribute. And the, and the fact that they can distribute via the postal system or a delivery system cheaper than we can sell through our shops means that maybe our tax system is, is skewed in the wrong direction. It's just bonkers. Well, once you get um, MPs and bureaucrats involved in all those systems, that takes forever and a day to put things right. You know, well, it does. To get there. It does indeed. Uh, Eric, pick a newspaper for me. Um, let's have the mail for a change. Let's have the mail. Here it is. A number between 1 and 72, please. We'll have 8, please. Oh. Well, if you'd picked uh, p uh, pages 28 and 29, uh, you could talk about uh, is the sun setting on the dream of retiring in Spain, but that's not the story. Um, farce of Iraqi sex offenders struck in, uh, stuck in Britain even though he's happy to pay for a flight home. A foreign criminal has been stuck in Britain for three years even though he wants to be deported, ministers have been told. The convicted sex uh, offender has even offered to pay for his airfare back to his native Iraq, but the Home Office have failed to put him on a plane. Oh, well, send him to Rwanda instead. Maybe. <laughs> Good luck with that. I don't think anybody's going to Rwanda anytime soon. Uh, Eric, thank you for your call. OK, let's turn our attention back to your calls. So, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, the smoking bill went through Parliament. He wants this to be the way we remember his premiership. And I'm asking you, what will Rishi Sunak's legacy be? The telephone number is 0344 499 1000. You can also WhatsApp on that as well, if you like. You can send a text, 8722, start your text with the word talk. And you can X slash tweet me at the James Max at talk. TV. We'll take more of your calls next here on Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kingdom City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking <laughs> and screaming. I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know.
What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh. Ooh. It's carry on what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. It's only about <laughs> 40 yeah. minutes. For... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're that supposed to have was moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five twenty-five is the time. It's me, James Max, with you till six. Talking about uh, Rishi Sunak, he's got his anti-smoking bill uh, through Parliament. He wants to be uh, perhaps remembered um, for this bill, but what will Rishi Sunak's legacy be? Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand is the telephone number. Quite a lot of incoming on the social, so we'll just pick up some of those. If you want to text eight seven treble two, start your text with the word talk. If you want to WhatsApp me, oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. And if you want to send me a tweet slash X at the James Max at Talk TV. Uh, Rich's uh, legacy: How to destroy a country in one term. Uh, morning, James. Uh, oil slick salesman Sunak's legacy will be how he turns my, my once beautiful country into a now third world toilet. Stop the boats. You couldn't get a pig in a passage. Make repatriation great again, I say. Send them all back. Wow. OK. Uh, Rishi Sunak's legacy will be a very rich Tory prime minister with left wing policies. Uh, it, I should also, uh, it should also mention that he completely screwed up the Rwanda policy and introduced a lifetime smoking ban and was born after 2009, says Roger. Uh, the smoking ban will just be another law for our virtue signalling police force to have a reason not to fight real cream, crimes, says David Portsmouth. Um, it will be forgetting him will be the problem, says Elizabeth. Uh, on Rishi's legacy, Starmer uh, won't be all roses. Uh, I, I love that we all agree and assume there's no chance of being re-elected and discussing legacy already. <laughs> so there, there we are. That's, that's that. Oh, I've had some incoming. Hang on. Hang on. What's this? Uh, uh, oh, no. Oh, I think I've broken it. Right. OK, now here we go. Uh, oh, this one says, um, James, what's the point in calling a show? You just talk over the caller. He said a couple of words and then was talked over for three minutes. Well, try it yourself. See if you can get a word in edgeways. Kevin's amazing stuff. Kevin? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Kevin. Do you think you can get a word in edgeways? Well, it's a struggle sometimes, but I think I probably will, yeah. How rude. Um, I mean, they've got a point, I suppose, but sometimes, you know, if, if I if I think whatever's being said to me is, a, I, I don't know, a bit, you know, ne needs to be a bit, I don't know, corrected or or, or, or something needs yeah, to be... The thing, the thing is, what happens is uh, I'll say something, and you, you know, and you'll say something back, and then you'll waffle on and on and on, and it's, it's sort of like... Uh, diverts the conversation. I, I, I'm sort of lost. What, what's he said? Do you know oh, I what I mean? It's, well, I, I'm not sure I do. Uh, Lenny? It, yes, James? Do I waffle on? I'm afraid you do, James. OK, thanks. Uh, Kevin, over to you. <laughs> what will Rishi Sunak's legacy be? <laughs> well, I think his, his legacy will be the end of a 14-year nightmare. Oh. Um, because, I mean... 
we, it's, it's sort of like it's not been proper politics. It's, do, you, do you think the 14-year... No, no, so I'm assuming you're referring to the Conservatives and, and the fact they've been in power for 14 years. Do you think that nightmare is all of their own making? Well, no, not all of it, but they haven't... Even the bits that weren't their own making, they haven't really made it better. I mean, COVID, I mean, that was handed poorly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the, I suppose with Ukraine, they did... That was OK. I mean, I can't really qu criticise that. Right. Apart from the amount of times Boris Johnson went over there when things got a bit heated over here, but apart <laughs> from that, I think that was that was quite sensible. Right. Um, but yeah, it has been a nightmare. It's just sort of uh, oh yeah, and I do believe Eric was right as well. Is the rich have got richer and the poor have got poorer? I mean, the wealth gap has never been bigger or grown at a faster rate. I don't... There's more people in poverty now than there has. been than when they took over? Yeah, I mean, I think there, there are a couple of things there. And, and I, I do agree with you, perhaps just going back a point or two, where you said 14 years and what have they done with it? I, I find it astonishing that despite the fact that they were in power, and in particular after Boris Johnson's victory, the amount of own goals where a government that was swept to power with an element of popularity, particularly after Labour's worst uh, defeat for uh, many a generation almost, they, they squandered that opportunity because they forgot their purpose, they forgot what they were meant to do. And, and I do blame Boris Johnson for that on the basis that he was handed out of office, not necessarily... He was always going to make mistakes with Covid, anybody who was Prime Minister was. But the problem was that he... When it came to COVID, his conduct was not what he was telling us to do. If he had managed himself and his government in the same way that we were managed, I think we would possibly forgive him for some of the mistakes that were made. Well, I don't know. I mean, there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, waste, wasn't there? All the PPE contracts yes. and that track and trace that didn't thirty six billion, it didn't work, and all the contracts. It just makes you. It's just like it's almost like watching a film. Oh, and you, you, if you gave a script of the last 14 years to somebody, they would look at it and say, nah, this is just not, this is not believable, it's too far-fetched. But, but I, I think there I mean, are things, though, which have happened in the world which are completely outside the government's control, um, where you can argue and say, well, how would somebody else have handled COVID? How would somebody have else uh, have handled the financial crash that we had back in 2008? How would somebody else have handled uh, the subsequent battles and wars which have um, increased world prices? How would somebody else have battled what's happened, particularly with China and particularly with Russia in terms of their conduct on, on the world stage? Um, what I'm concerned about is that half of it, I think, is world events over which nobody had any control. But the other half is what could our government have done? And when it comes to taxation, I think they've made big mistakes. When it comes to the NHS, I think they've made mistakes. I think when it comes to governing our infrastructure and, and making sure that regulators are doing the right job, I think they've made mistakes. So I think it's half of one and uh, where you, you can have a blame storm and see where it sticks. And the other half sticking right on the, on the lapel of this government who have taken some very poor choices you're waffling again yeah but you know i was right <laughs> well, well no you're not right because you can you 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 can you say oh you, you can't you, pin you everything that's gone wrong on the government we can't you said we um we don't know if anybody could do any better well we can see because we can just see how other countries handled it with covid i think we just we just there's only one country there. that handled it better and that was sweden no, if you look at the amount of deaths in this country, we're about mid-table. Right. And if you look about how much money... I don't, I don't really care about COVID off. that much. I don't, I don't think that should be the defining legacy. You, you, you said what the, the, the big things that have happened. Yes, I mean, COVID is one, one of, of them, things. but I don't... I, all I'm saying, and I'm kind of agreeing with you, you're trying to find disagreement where there isn't any, which is... Uh, there are plenty of things for which this government can be blamed, but there are also things which have happened in the world that have meant that they should have pivoted, they should have changed their strategy, they should have changed what they were doing, and they didn't. That's their mistake. Yeah, but the thing is, you can look over the last 14 years and think, well, what have they achieved? What uh, very little, achieved? Kevin. Pardon? Very little. Well, I mean, the only thing that is achieved is, um, you know... The wealth gap for the rich. I mean, that's, it's, it, that, it's never been bigger or grown at a fast rate. Which but I, that's I, I that's a global well. problem as well, Kevin. 
Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't mean it has to be our problem. We can't just say, well, they've got a problem. So but what, what do you, OK, it. so how, how are you going to narrow the wealth gap? Yeah, but I'm not a politician. I'm just saying... What yeah, but you said that it's are. a problem. I don't, think that's, I don't think that's the biggest legacy of this government. I think the biggest legacy of this government are, are problems that they've created of their own making. That if they, if they had tackled the problems over which they have control and the problems over which they could have done something, instead of infighting, which they've spent their time doing, I think they've squandered Brexit. I think they've squandered the opportunity to put Britain on the, on the, on the map following huge amounts of uh, technological advancement. I think they've squandered the opportunity of the next generation to be those who are the entrepreneurs of the future. And I think they've squandered the opportunity to reform the tax system, which isn't fit for purpose. Well, I mean, you know my views on Brexit. I don't think there was any advantages. But anyway, we don't want to go down that line because it'd be well, like... Because you're wrong. Yourself. But, <laughs> yeah, OK. But, I mean, they haven't achieved anything. And the only... The, the, there's no... With them, there's nothing you can say, oh, I really believe, you know, we vote them in, we can look forward. But I, I, I agree with you. I think, they've, I think they've made a terrible mess of it. Yeah, they don't... They, there's no hope there. There's nothing... What do you... What do you... Hear, what do you what do you say to Sharon? What do you say to Sharon? From, yep. What do you say to Sharon from Staffordshire who's texted in and said, "Good morning, James. Sunak's legacy will be wasting taxpayers' money." Well, yeah, I agree with it. They yeah. have to waste taxpayers' money. I mean, how can you borrow one point seven trillion pounds and everything be worse? I, I think that's a very good question, Kevin. I. I genuinely think this government have made so many mistakes of their own making they could have made better decisions and if they had we the people would be in a better place and we wouldn't be talking about ideology in respect of the wealth gap because i don't care if you have a wealth gap what i care about is whether you have aspiration and whether you have the ability from anybody at any part of our country to make it and to make a success of their lives combined with the fact that i think that you should have a, a government and local government who do the job that they're supposed to do we're supposed to look after people who can't look after themselves we're supposed to provide safety nets when they're needed we're supposed to do the things that individuals can't do like provide infrastructure and we're supposed to make sure that the laws of this country are upheld so that people feel safe and looked after and I I think all of those things they're failing miserably well yeah i mean i i could agree slightly with the wealth gap thing i mean a wealth gap is okay as long as it's not going too fast one way and the you know at the rich end and at the poor end is actually decreasing yeah i you agree know, I, mean, I agree I, th I, I i would agree with you kevin so listen i think i th think you've had more than enough air time you've got to admit that i've allowed you to talk way too much you kevin have, and you didn't waffle much no not much uh, uh, and way too much so let's uh let's focus on a newspaper which one would you like uh the guardian oh for god's sake you've done that on purpose <laughs> you see i give you time to talk and then you just punish me it's almost like you don't care here it is. Here's the tawdry old rag. Um, number between 1 and 42, please. Uh, six. Oh. Do you want to go to uh, Gaza? Oh, no, I can't... I well, you're going to have to, because that's what you picked. It's a double-page spread. As Israel weighs up plans to respond to Iran's drone and missile attack, the fate of nearly two million Gazans sheltering in the border town of Rafa hangs in the balance. Israel uh, has said for weeks it's going to launch a ground operation into the last corner of the territory that's not seen fierce ground fighting, despite intense opposition from its closest allies. Uh, I mean, I don't really know much about that, but it's probably about money. Oh, I don't think it is. I think it's about Israel's safety and security. Uh, Kevin, thank you. 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number to get involved. Tell me what you think Rishi Sunak's legacy will be. He's had a right old pasting this morning from us. Uh, it's, it's a shame that we can't find anything good to say about it. I mean, he set his five priorities and they haven't really gone very well. Uh, Lenny, hello. Good morning, James. You, so, I've come in for a lot of flack this morning about waffling and all that stuff. Well, I think it, I, th I think uh, you should listen to what people are saying. Do you think I don't? Yes, James. How rude! Well, if if, if the cap fits, you've got to wear it, James. Well, it doesn't fit. You bought me the wrong size. <laughs> well, you just go got back to, to the shop, take listen. the receipt, and get a new one. Unbelievable. <laughs> 
unbelievable. Well, yeah, I, you know I will not lie, James. I well, will only tell you the truth. Well, you'll tell me what you think. But the thing is, what it is, Lenny, what it is, is they're not fit for purpose. So that proves that I listen to you. <laughs> well, uh, that is debatable, James. That is debatable. But uh, anyway, can we talk about Rishi? Yes. And, and his legacy? And what it is, he has been a big part in creating a Tory party uh, that is in such a state that no one wants Labour, but they are a long way second to them. That is the best way to put it. Well, I I, uh, I would agree. I, I'd also say that um, Lee has been in touch and says, Rishi Sunak's legacy is going to be that his trousers are too short as he's messed everything up that's what I'll remember the fool by. Well, he's probably grown a lot since he bought them, James. Sharon from Staffordshire says, I think he needs to pay back uh, from all the money he has. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, if if there was accountability in our with the Tory party and they all paid the money back they don't deserve, the country would be in a better state. Well, there's a thought. Uh, so, Lenny, is there anything good that we can say about Rishi Sunak? Well, uh, I honestly cannot think of anything that he has succeeded in that means anything. Because I, I, I too, I, I am trying to find out what he's done. And, and I, like you, I wring my hands at the fact that you've got a party that's in power and it has squandered its uh, electoral uh, success that it had at the last general election. You've got an opposition that has uh, reformed itself and yet doesn't look, in my view, any better. It's just that they're not the current lot. And at least when Tony Blair was there... It, he was a great orator, he was interesting to listen to, uh, he had aspirations for the country. Keir Starmer doesn't seem to have aspirations for the country that I can buy into. Well, I think, it, it is, if you look at it logically, and that is that the Conservatives have not been capable to handle the problems that they've had to face. Well, I think they've, they've distracted been, they've themselves. They've incompetent. True, but I think they've also distracted themselves with things that don't matter. So they get, they've got their ideological knickers in a twist over things like the trans debate, over things like, um, um, I don't know, the Rwanda bill, all sorts of stuff where they seem to have come up with ideas and plans that just don't necessarily make our lives any better. And they're taking their eye off the ball when it comes to actually managing things effectively. Well, I, th I truly believe they've not been patriotic enough. OK, fair enough. Yeah, 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 and that is their problem. Right. If they was patriotic with their job, then we wouldn't be in the state that we're in. Let's have a newspaper, Lenny. Which one would you like? Uh, let's have the, uh, the Daily Express, James. Oh. Um, let's have... Uh, let's have the Daily Express. Um, oh, uh, meanwhile... Um, Sharon from Staffordshire has been in touch and says, uh, James, please tell Lenny from Ashford that Sharon said that uh, you, James, do listen all the time. He do listen all the time? Yes. Uh, you, well, I, 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 I cannot agree with Sharon there because uh, what it is, I mean, I'll tell you what to do. Sorry, so you wanted the Daily Express? Right. Very simply, yes. time yourself. Well, I do every morning. I have to start on time and finish on time. And whose yeah, name is it, above the door, Lenny? It doesn't say uh, early breakfast with Lenny from Ashford, does it? No. I know. No. I know. No. I know. Yeah, but we 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 all deserve a part of uh, to participate. Of course you do. Yes. What do you, what do you want? Do you want me to just well, arrive, say hello, good morning, the phone lines are open, and then walk out my seat and just leave it? No, but if you... It, a debate is the best way of education. And if it's a two-way debate, it is a lot better, James. Right. Can you hang on there, Lenny, because uh, th there's some adverts that are required. Uh, hang on there, because I've, I've got a plan. Uh, and for that plan, you'll have to stay with me, and we'll deal with that next here on Talk.
very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. But you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail to, her. Yeah, we're absolutely. Supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five forty-six is the time. Uh, I was chatting to Lenny, who's uh, in Ashford. Uh, Lenny, so you were basically saying that I don't allow enough debate. Uh, it, yes, James, that that is one way of putting it. Okay, yes. all right, uh, Malcolm. Yes, I'm here, Jim. Uh, hi, Malcolm, in Cardiff. Uh, so Lenny's giving me a whole load of hassle this morning, frankly, uh, as are others. Uh, so obviously I want to give as much um, air as possible. So I wondered if maybe you'd like to chat to Lenny uh, about whatever point you wanted to make on the basis that uh, I maybe shouldn't be here anymore. Well, I, I disagree. You're, you're doing a job and it's the best you can do and we just have to put up with it. Oh, I don't think you should have to put up with it, Malcolm. I mean, you know. Well, we are going to turn the television off, and we don't want to put up with it. I mean, I mean Lenny, uh, if you're going to present this show, Lenny, know. stop coughing all over him. <laughs> well, it, it just, well, it, it, you know, he's uh, he, he spoke the truth, James. Yes, he was saying that I'm the presenter, and you're talking nonsense. No, he didn't say that at all, James. Oh, sorry, he, Malcolm, what did you say? We have to put up with it, James. Oh, we I do see. put up with it, James. Oh, I see. That's what we have to do. Right. Uh, would you describe listening to the show as having to put up with that, Malcolm? No, well, I'm certain of your contributors, but I've only got my opinion I can give you, you know. I oh, I see. How, how would you rate Lenny and Ashford? Well, he's got an opinion. That, that's his opinion at the end of the day. Right. If people have counter opinions, that's his opinion. Well, I mean, you're doing a fairly good job because at least you're giving the public a bit of a say in the situation. Yeah, I mean, many of my colleagues don't bother. 
No, I, I, I'm quite aware of that. Yeah. I mean, the, the same people seem to be going around these TV, TV studios day after day after day, from one program to the next program to the next, but all these so called experts we have in our society. Mm, so called. Um, but, Malcolm. But answer Sunek, answer Sunek now. Um, oh, yes. What he's failed to do, you can't reduce taxation unless you reduce spending. And we've wasted millions and millions and millions of pounds. And we also got local authorities here in Wales, especially, just keeping up our age, up our age, up our age. Like, you've got to stop the spending. But okay, so. Russia's big, biggest failure was stupid as he was. Do you think, though. To ha- you know, to help out but when you say well, yeah 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 all of that but when you when you talk about reduce the spending you see of course government has to spend both national and, and local but what you really want them to do is to spend the money that they have more wisely don't you oh of course i do i just want to reduce it but it always amazes me this the working man who is actually the working man me I was a bit, uh, yeah i know well, who isn't the working man then put it that way i reverse the situation or the working woman you know, or a working woman, I'm um, being sexist in any way. Uh, who, who is working? Who isn't working? Who's a good worker? Who's a hard worker? Uh, honest to God, just get on with doing the job. Mm. Well, there is there is that. Now, Lenny was going to pick a newspaper, um, and I think you picked The Express, didn't you, Lenny? Yes, James. So, um, uh, Malcolm, I'm, I'm going to come to you in a second to find out which newspaper you'd like. Uh, but, Lenny, let's, uh, let's pick up this and see if we can have a little bit of a sensible debate. A number between 1 and 60, please. 22, James. 22. Are you excited by that, Malcolm, that he's picked page 22 of the Daily Express? I mean, I don't buy papers, so don't really worry me. Oh. Um, I mine from the television. It's just good programmes like you're putting out. Right. Do you want a do you want a happy story? <laughs> wow. Do you want a happy story uh, or a sad story? Well, let's have a happy one. Try and start the day off right. Uh, Malcolm, do you want a happy one or a sad one? Oh, I don't, I don't mind. I leave you choose. OK, well, Len, uh, Lenny said that he wants a happy one, so here we are. RAF veteran John Cooper is reunited with the very same Tiger Moth that he flew on his first training mission 80 years ago to the day. Uh, Flight Lieutenant Cooper, who's 99, climbed aboard the Stowe Marys Great War Aerodrome in Malden in Essex, along with the biplane's co-owner and pilot, Terry Dan. He made his first flight in a Tiger Moth, T-6055, renumbered as G. AIDS, in uh, 1946 on the 14th of April 1944. John said the anniversary on Sunday was wonderful and he thoroughly enjoyed it. What a great day he had. Yes. Lovely to... Yeah, that's the sort of news we want to hear. Well, there we go. So, um... Yeah, so th- th- there we go. Um, Malcolm, pick a newspaper for me, and whilst you uh, have a think about which one you want, uh, Paul has been in touch and says, James, you steer the good ship of early breakfast with a perfect blend of humour and serious. I fear early breakfast with Lenny from Ashford would have to start at 4am for Lenny to cut through all the news, plus he couldn't control Kent from Kent. All right, well, nobody wants to say anything about that. Malcolm, which newspaper would you like? Um, mail, but... The mail. OK, sorry, I was a bit slow to react on that one. Uh, it, was, it was a little bit like the government. They heard something and didn't do anything. Uh, right, a number between 1 and 72, please. No, I'll give you a chance. Five. Five. OK, are you excited by this, uh, Lenny? Uh, yes, I'm waiting to see what we get, James, yes. Um, oh! Many aspiring leading, leading men hit the gym to shake up for their next, shape up for the next role, but Tom Hollander considered letting himself go to become a fat actor so he'd always get parts. Uh, <laughs> the White Lotus star, who's 56, felt that at a certain age he'd give up trying not to be fat to become a fat actor because they never stopped working. But after becoming a father for the first time with partner Fran Hickman, who's 43, he says he now needs to live as long as I can, admitting to a bit of compulsion to overeat. He told the... Uh, uh, Ruth's Table podcast that he recently went to an Austrian clinic to lose weight after putting it on for a role, adding to be at war with food is not good, and I do have a sense that being an actor you have to inevitably be obsessed with your appearance. Well, acting is all a part of appearance, James, isn't it? It's the part that you play, isn't it? Well, exactly, and I had to de because I got very fat. So, uh, Malcolm, what's your answer? You pick the paper. Um, I, I don't really have any view on it, you know what I mean? Um, society's going downhill and there's a long way to go yet. And we'll just have to put up with it. Well, 
<laughs> All right, <laughs> sounds very miserable. Meanwhile, Mrs. Donk has been in touch and says, James, ignore them. Push those buttons. You just do it perfectly. Uh, there we go. The buttons are pushed. Malcolm, thank you. Lenny, thank you. We turn our attention to your finances. And joining me now is Becky O'Connor from Pension B. Becky, good morning. Good morning. So let's talk about Scottish Power. Apparently, they've overcharged customers for eight years. Could a refund be incoming? Uh, yes, I think the, re the refund has actually already been issued um, automatically. So the compensation average was £300 for overcharging from 2015 to 2023. This was people who were paying by direct debit, but they were being charged as if they were on the price cap tariff, which people pay on receipt of the bill. So it affected a relatively small number of customers, 1,700 customers. Um, even so, you know, it's one of those things you hear and you think, oh, that, that could have been me. Mm. Scottish Power did pick it up, they responded. Um, it's a reminder to check your direct debit and to check you're not being overcharged. Now let's talk about lower inflation. Uh, what does that mean for our money? And also what does it mean that uh, certainly in the US, uh, inflation isn't coming down as quickly as people had hoped? Yeah, so the figure's expected to be around 3 to 3.1% this morning. Obviously we don't, we don't know yet. We just have to wait a couple of hours. Um, it could go down to 2%, which is of course the Bank of England target by April. That's what some experts, uh, economists are expecting. Um, it, it's clearly good news for all of us isn't it if inflation's coming down we've had a really unusual uh, period of extremely high inflation you know i do remember when a, a figure of 3.1 percent would have been considered very high but now you know we're considering that is pretty low and, and going in the right direction so it's good for all of us it's especially good for savers particularly as the sort of rates that you can get on savings now are around five percent um for easy access accounts it's great news for pensioners and other people mm. on low fixed incomes um but generally speaking you know we we want to see this happening it does mean that prices are still rising of course it, it's still inflation but it's a lot lower it is a lot lower now very quickly uh bras should they be vat free i kind of think they should yes um so radiographers made this point at their annual conference yesterday yeah but you Women go down that route effect, and then it's just like your pants should be vat free we all need them well, yeah, but you don't need period pants. That's the difference, you know. It's the it's the it's the difference between a kind of necessity that is under the Equality uh, Act, maybe maybe discriminatory or or may not. Okay. But, um, All right. No. Well, it's on a that point that's been made, James. On that <laughs> bombshell, we must leave it, Becky O'Connor, Director of Public Affairs at Pension B. Thankfully, I've run out of time. So there we go. Thank you very much indeed to her, and thank you very much indeed for your calls and your texts. And I'm sorry if I didn't get to them, but I will be back tomorrow for early breakfast from five. Meanwhile, next. Today, let's talk today with Jeremy Carl and Nicola Thorpe. today on Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, a trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Quite right, too. It's that time again.